don't think it necessarily has to be certified organic, but I think if you know your farmer and you know the farm that they're, you know, that where they're creating products and you know that they're using organic methods, I think that's ultimately the key. But I, I think, you know, if you use, if you use the, the pigs as an example, um, so my pigs are gonna get, they actually get a soy free grain that's raised organically and it's it's got um, around 20 percent uh, protein content and that's their feed so they're omnivores they can digest grain and then on top of that they can also digest cellulose so they're outside and they're going to eat they might eat birds they might eat squirrels um, they might eat um, you know, any random animals that they sort of come across. But on top of that, they're gonna be rooting around for worms. They're gonna be rooting around um, to, to turn over any tubers that are inside of their pasture. So if you compare the pigs and what they're eating, you know, their feed, and when, when we butcher these pigs, their fat tends to be a little bit more yellow. So their, their diet's a little bit higher in vitamin A which then in turn we get more vitamin a out of their fat and and on top of that their protein is a little bit higher so they tend to we get more uh lean meat out of them as well so um if you compare that to a factory farm pig a factory farm pig isn't going to be growing up out on pasture they're not going to have a digestive system that is influenced by the ecosystem that we have out here uh, in their pasture and because of that factory farm pigs are going to be injected with antibiotics um, they're going to have to deal with that and they're only getting grain they're not going to be rooting around their protein isn't going to be as high they're not going to be getting anything wild no grasses so their their vitamin a uh, every other vitamin that you can possibly think of is going to be significantly lower so the meat becomes higher quality it's more nutrient dense it has more it has more vitamins and minerals in it and you can test that when you're when you're testing even things like zinc inside of uh, pastured pork versus or or grass-fed beef versus conventionally raised uh, meat products so the biggest thing is that what they eat determines how high uh, the, determines the quality of their meat and then that determines how well we can digest that and then use that to recover from our day-to-day -day life. As if we can lay in life. I think I think one thing with, with organic farming, um, and, and you'll see it the fastest in birds, is like the chickens and the ducks are out on pasture, so they're they're eating the grass, they're eating the worms, they're going to eat rodents as well. Actually, they should be getting a high protein diet. Um, but the thing you see it the most is with their eggs. If I get if I get eggs for my birds, right? The because they have a higher calcium content in their diet, the eggshells are actually hard. It's it's significantly harder to break out open their their eggshells. But then when you look at the yolk. The yolk is, it's like orange, it's not yellow, it's not this pale yellow. And you don't have to even take it to a, a, a lab, but the labs will show, the science shows that uh, egg yolks from chickens out on pasture are significantly higher in beta carotins and vitamin A, vitamin E, um, and vitamin D. So, and vitamin K2. So these, you know, you can just see it as soon as, as soon as you move them, and, and you can see the, the ducks and the chickens eating bugs and eating worms and, and, and eating the grass like they are right now. They're happier, they're healthier, their bone structure is healthier, their, their immune system's healthier, and then they produce higher quality eggs, higher quality meat, which then in, leads to us being healthier individuals. But I think going off of the, uh, the biggest fallacy is that people, oh, people say, oh, you can't organic farm this to save the world. You know, we have this hunger problem in the world. We can't do that. Well, yes, we can. Like farmers like my brother um, Brooks at North Mountain Pastures, or Joel Salatin, or Alan Savory, or Sepp Holzer. These guys have all proven that on small tracts of land, we can organic farm and we can we can produce 
meat products efficiently and, and thus also produce grain products even efficiently and in a very dense method of farming without compromising the health of the animals and without compromising the environment. But what people forget is that conventional farming is highly subsidized by taxpayer dollars, so it's a it's a fake price of food. Whereas, you know, organic farming typically is not. And in the United States, it's a little more pricey. It's a little more um, costly, but more and more people are getting into organic farming and that's going to drive the price down and that's going to bring out the real cost of food and that's what we've got to keep in mind is that uh, people always say like we can't solve world problems world hunger problems by by having organic farming but it's 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 wrong um, economically and it's also wrong where you know if we go to these countries where they are struggling with food production it's because they've lost their their farming methods that they have evolved with and that's where um, getting back to uh, a high density livestock farming on pasture can lead to a very very impressive uh, system of food production a common misconception is that if you eat if you eat meat that it's actually like a, it's like you're you're bad for the environment you're hurting the planet and what's sad is that in today like if like if we use me as an example versus a guy who is a vegetarian who doesn't eat animals and maybe his reasoning for not eating animals is environmental but my reasoning for raising my animals this way is environmental as well so Everything that I'm eating meat wise is either from my farm or my brother's farm. So within 60 miles of, of my home. Nothing's getting shipped across country, nothing's coming from China, nothing's coming from Brazil, nothing's coming from Mexico, nothing's coming from South America. You know, everything is coming locally and any of the vegetables I eat, tend to eat are all gonna be uh, fermented vegetables so that even in the winter time I can still eat locally grown vegetables through the process of uh, fermentation, they're preserved. But I think that if we go back to people having this misconception that eating meat is this bad thing for the environment, it all stems from conventional farming. Whereas now, you know, we've rediscovered the proper way to raise these animals, to raise pigs, to raise cows, to raise chickens and ducks out on pasture and geese and, and sheep and, and goats and to raise them so that they have an actual ecosystem on their farms and on our farm here so that when they're pooping they can feed the planet and they can create even more biodiversity in the soil so there's more bacteria and more fungus growing in this soil so that next year when we bring the chickens back through all the nitrogen that they've provided the soil creates a healthier environment even further which then leads to my next batch of chickens and ducks being healthier as well so not only do we, you know, we're healthier because we're eating meat that's raised properly, but the environment here is, is it's healthier because they're bringing in um, other types of animals that haven't been here, other insects that haven't been here. They're bringing in more uh, praying mantis and more grasshoppers and things like that that other wild animals can then also eat. So there's always this thing of, of being a meat eater or is is isn't good and being a vegetarian is good but the sad part is, is that it's the opposite is that vegetarians have to or vegans especially tend to have to bring in you know highly processed products from all over the world which leads to an enormous amount of energy expenditure and which can then lead to a negative impact on the environment so if we always look at everything as what is the most energy efficient way to consume nutrition, it's likely always gonna come back to high density based livestock farming in conjunction with organic vegetable farming. So, I don't know, I think it's cool that we can basically support my entire family off of what we're doing here at Hickory Hill and what my brother's doing at North Mountain Pastures. <laughs> So farming for me and like I don't have to do this and I 
Some days I might not want to. <laughs> well, it, it, now, now I do actually want to. Like now, it's like uh, coming out and taking care of the animals is is like my peace time, my relaxation time, where it's sort of like um, it's my time to sort of decompress and and uh, be somewhat normal. Um, but I think for me, ultimately, it was one, I wanted to have high quality food, but I also wanted to have the ability to um, to raise my kids the way I wanted them to be raised. So, uh, you know, it, it goes back to them learning simple chores like taking care of the animals and, and understanding the life cycle of being a human being and that these things aren't pets, right? Like they like they're going to help us survive. So. They're here, they're servants to us, we kill them, or we get eggs, and I know it sounds terrible, but that's part of learning how to be a human. And I think that's something that we've sort of lost over the last 50 years maybe. Uh, but I want my children to sort of experience that. I want them to experience those responsibilities, but also value what the work is that they're doing so that when they put in their hard work and they raise these animals along with me and they raise the pigs and they raise the turkeys and the ducks and the chickens and all that, that when they're eating it and then and and when they're eating the eggs and and they're coming out and doing this hard work they start to value where their food comes from they start to value the work that someone put in for that animal to survive and to be raised and they start to value and appreciate food more and that's once you can appreciate food more you start to respect the planet and you respect the environment a bit more and you respect yourself more so that's that's the overriding goal for us and and why we farm here